Now we begin the English language transmission from Pyongyang, the capital of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Kim Min-il, Premier of the Cabinet of the DPRK, met and had a talk with a delegation of the Global Steel Holdings Limited of India, led by Chairman Pramod Mita, who paid a critical call on him at the Monster Assembly Hall in Pyongyang on April the 1st. Meanwhile, the delegation visited Manjongde, the birthplace of the great leader President Kim Il-sung. The delegation also visited the Arch of Triumph and enjoyed a performance of the State Symphony Orchestra. State academic degrees and titles were awarded to intellectuals in Korea on the occasion of the Day of the Sun, the birth anniversary of the great leader President Kim Il-sung. The awarding ceremony was held on April the 1st. At the ceremony, a decision of the State Commission for Conferring Degrees and Titles was read out and the title of candidate academician was awarded to Won Dongjin, director of the orthopedics hospital under the Korea General Red Cross Hospital and others, the degrees and titles of Professor, Doctor and Associate Professor to Lee So Young, head of the Department of the Pyongyang University of Mechanical Engineering and other intellectuals. A letter of pledge to the great leader Kim Jong-il was adopted at the ceremony. The 57th plenary meeting of the Central Committee of the Democratic Women's Union of Korea took place in Pyongyang on April the 1st. Present at the meeting were members and ultimate members of the Central Committee of the Union and officials of the Central and Local Women's Union organizations. The plenary meeting discussed the tasks of the women's union organizations to carry out the tasks outlined in the famous work of the great leader Kim Jong-il, let us further glorify the proud traditions of the Korean women's movement of Chuche in the drive for building a thriving nation. The participants in the National Meeting of Scientists and Technicians in the year of Songun visited Manjongde, the birthplace of the great leader Kim Il-sung, on April the 1st. They also visited the Revolutionary Martyrs Cemetery on Mount Daesung and placed bouquets before the bronze bust of the anti-Japanese war heroine Kim jong Suk and paid homage to her. They also visited the Pyongyang Textile Mill. Chairman of the Korean Scientists and Technologists Association in Japan, Hwang Chul Hong, head of the delegation of the General Association of Korean Residents in Japan to the National Meeting of Scientists and Technicians in the year of Sungun, was interviewed by the Korean Central News Agency on Thursday. He said through the meeting he was convinced that under the wise leadership of great Kim Jong-il, Korea, his homeland, would be turned into a scientific and technological power and economic giant looking down on the world in the near future. He noted that the spirit of the homeland making a leap forward higher and faster while opening up the cutting edge of technology in line with the requirement of the era of the intellectual economy is giving great confidence and courage to the overseas Koreans. He expressed a resolve to vigorously advance, keeping the mind and breath with the people in the homeland, advancing in high spirits for the building of a thriving nation under the sunburn based revolutionary guidance of leader Kim Jong-il. The Council for the Solution of the Issue of the Volunteers' Corps in South Korea issued a statement on March the 29th denouncing the Japanese right-wing gangsters for their manners. The statement exposed the fact that some time ago, the Japanese right-wing gangsters sent the governor of Hyogo Prefecture and the Kobe Korean High School crunk letters together with knives, saying they would kill Koreans and burn the Korean schools. The statement maintained that it is a retaliation for the expression of the view of the prefectural governor that the Korean schools should be included in the list of assistants for high schools. A spokesman for the Democratic Labour Party of South Korea issued a commentary on March the 26th on the lapse of 100 years after the death of patriotic martyr Ahn jung un by the Japanese imperialist executioners. The commentary deplored that though a long time has passed since the martyr was killed in the determined struggle to win back independence and sovereignty of the nation even at the cost of his life, descendants of pro-Japanese elements are still running wild in South Korea. The commentary condemned that the present government and conservatives are beautifying the colonial domination of the Japanese imperialists and distorting history while conniving at the movies of Japan to seize dog eyelids.
The South Korean Solidarity for the Implementation of the South North Joint Declaration released a commentary on March the 30th denouncing the popular authorities for their fascist crackdown upon the members of the Solidarity. The commentary said that day the public security authorities ransacked the houses of the former core members of the Solidarity and the representative of the Mire Opel Troop, an affiliated organization of the Solidarity, simultaneously on suspicion of the violation of the national security law. The commentary criticized that the public security authorities committed such outrages, accusing them of their past activities in the students' movement and the Solidarity. The Indian newspapers Asian Age and the Statesman, the Iranian Press Television, the Egyptian newspaper Egyptian Gazette, the Bulgarian Focus News Agency, the Polish newspaper Gazeta Pravna, the British Reuters and the French AFP News Agency reported on March the 26th and the 27th the answer of a spokesman for the general staff of the Korean People's Army to the question raised by the Korean Central News Agency as regards the recent opening to the public of new materials on the frantic movers of the U.S. imperialists and the South Korean puppet war maniacs to topple down the system of the DPRK. And that's the end of the news read by Kim Hyun Oak. This is Voice of Korea. Dear listeners, now is the time for broadcasting the short biography of Kim Jong-il. Today, we present the 51st installment. 7. Lofty feeling of affection for fellow countrymen. Under the banner of the policy of founding a federal republic. Putting an end to the tragedy of the national division and achieving the country's reunification became a more urgent task as time passed. The national division imposed by outside forces in the 1940s continued into the 1980s and distrust and antagonism between the North and the South grew intense. At the 6th Congress of the Workers' Party of Korea, Kim Il-sung analyzed and estimated the situation at home and abroad concerning the reunification of the country and clarified the way for achieving the course of the country's reunification peacefully in the interests of the whole nation, even in the situation that there existed different ideologies and systems in the North and the South. Regarding reunification as the supreme task of the nation and the lofty mission of its own, Kim Jong-il wisely led the struggle for putting into effect the policy of founding the Democratic Federal Republic of Korea, or DFRK, advanced by Kim Il-sung. The joint meeting of political parties and social organizations in the DPRK convened at the proposal of Kim Jong-il in November 1980 confirmed the policy of founding the DFRK as the only just reunification policy and adopted with the unanimous approval of all the participants a letter to be sent to democratic figures and personages of political parties and social organizations in South Korea and abroad. The letter proposed forming a preparatory committee for funding the DFRK involving representatives from all walks of life in the North, the South and abroad in order to realize the policy of funding the DFRK as soon as possible. To this end, it suggested holding a preliminary meeting at the earliest possible date. This policy gathered greater support at home and abroad. Kim Jong-il put forward a new policy of making a proposal for calling a joint conference of 100 politicians from the North, the South and abroad. In February 1982, the statement of the Committee for the Peaceful Reunification of the Fatherland proposing the calling of the joint conference was made public through the mass media. This statement was an announcement of patriotic spirit for reunification, which aroused all Koreans in the North, the South and abroad to the implementation of the policy of founding the DFRK. However, due to the splitest maneuvers of the South Korean authorities, dialogue and contact between the North and the South were not brought to realization and many difficulties and hardships still stood in the way of the country's reunification. Kim Jong-il devoted all his energies to keeping the Korean people's zeal for reunification, gathering momentum, creating an atmosphere of reconciliation and solidarity, lightening their misfortunes and sufferings caused by the division of the country, and endeavoring to reconnect the severed national links. 
from late August to early September 1984, unusually heavy rains poured down, and floods swept the whole area of South Korea. According to the South Korean newspapers, the floods killed 350 people, disrupted the lives of 207,000 people, destroyed 36,700 houses, and washed away or buried a wide area of farmland and roads. Kim Jong-il, who was then given the spot guidance to various areas, worried very much about the misfortune that had befallen the South Korean compatriots and thought about how to help them. One rainy evening, after looking out of the window for a long time, he asked an official what measures could be taken as the flood damage in South Korea had been reported to be tremendous. That evening, officials decided to report through the mass media the flood damage in South Korea, but their opinions were in accord in that it was not necessary even to think of sending relief goods to the flood victims. They considered that in the light of the attitudes of the successive South Korean authorities that had never accepted the North's compatriot proposals of that type, a proposal for sending relief goods would be refused once again. The following morning, Kim Jong-il, after hearing their opinions, said, We must send the flood victims in South Korea relief goods permeated with our warm feelings of fraternity. The Central Committee of the Red Cross Society of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea immediately discussed the issue of sending relief goods to the South Korean flood victims and adopted appropriate decisions. According to the decisions, measures were taken for sending 50,000 soap. One soap equals about 144 kilograms, 50,000 soap of rice, 500,000 meters of cloth, 100,000 tons of cement, and medicines. This amount of rice was enough to supply 250 kilograms to each household of the victims and the amount of cloth was sufficient to provide every victim with a suit of clothes. With 100,000 tons of cement, 30,000 flats could be built and the medicines were enough to prevent and cure various kinds of diseases which might break out in the flooded areas. On hearing the news, the South Korean people welcomed it, saying that, as the proof of goes, blood is thicker than water, and that only the brothers of the same blood in the north could save the flood victims in the south. Even the Western mass media commented that it was a product of 100% compatriotic feeling. Kim Jong-il pushed forward the work of preparing the relief goods. He formed the headquarters for this work, involving the senior officials of the then Administration Council, and assigned it the task of organizing the production of the relief goods and making preparations for their transportation as quickly as possible. Moreover, on a rainy day, he visited the production site for relief goods and gave detailed guidance to it and he issued a special order on mobilizing wagons and lorries needed in large numbers. At last, on September 28, 1984, hundreds of lorries loaded with relief goods crossed the military demarcation line for Pazzo and large ships headed for the ports in Incheon and Pukpyeong. This was a scene witnessed for the first time in 40 years of the country's division. The opening of the barrier of division occasioned resumption of contacts and dialogue in many fields between the North and the South. No South economic talks were opened, and no South Red Cross talks, which had been suspended 12 years ago, were held again in May 1985. In order to broaden the scope of the inter-Korean dialogues and negotiations, Kim Jong-il thought it that proposals for holding a North-South Joint Conference of Parliamentarians conferences of sports figures and students, and various other proposals for dialogues were made. He also took meticulous care for the realization of mutual visits of art troops, sports teams, and home visiting groups between the North and the South that would create an atmosphere of reconciliation and unity. As for the items to be discussed at the North-South Red Cross talks, he instructed that it should be proposed that on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the country's liberation, the separated families in the north and the south should make free visits, 
not confining themselves to a meeting at Panmunjom, and performances of our troops should be exchanged. He added that if the families scattered on both sides visited each other and our troops were exchanged, an atmosphere of reconciliation and unity would be created. In this way, mutual visits of our troops and home visiting groups between the North and the South were brought to realization. In September 1985, members of our troops and home visiting groups led by the Red Cross societies of both sides visited Pyongyang and Seoul respectively. This was a great event in the history of the nation. The outro from the North started its performance with the Kungang fairies in which eight legendary fairies fly down from the sky, flapping their wings, and unfold a fascinating world of dance with a background of the 12,000 peaks of Mount Kungang glowing under a rainbow. The troop put on the stage programs reflecting the customs and sentiments peculiar to the Korean nation and the colorful ones portraying the happy and optimistic lives of the North Korean people, winning great admiration from the audiences. Members of the home visiting groups had impressive reunions with their families and relatives after 40 years of separation. The exchanges of the art troops and the home visiting groups through the Red Cross societies made the whole nation feel keenly that Korea is one and the Korean nation must be reunified, further inspiring South Korean people with other for reunification. In the meantime, Kim Jong il put great efforts into forming a great national united front. He ensured that various reasonable proposals for forming a pan national united front were made to actively arouse the patriotic democratic forces in the South and abroad to the cause of national reunification. As a result, dialogues and meetings between the North and the overseas compatriots were held in Vienna, Helsinki, and Tokyo. In December 1984, the National Alliance for the country's reunification was formed. Besides, in the latter half of the 1980s, letters proposing the holding of a North-South Joint Conference for forming a National United Front were sent to political parties, social organizations, and prominent personages in South Korea. As soon as the letters were sent, broad sections of the South Korean people voiced their opinions that the masses must be the main force in the solution of the reunification problem. This showed that the motive force which could achieve the country's reunification by the efforts of the Korean nation itself had been further strengthened. You've been listening to the 51st installment of the short biography of Kim Jong-il. This is Voice of Korea. The February 8th Yunnan complex is in South Hanbyeong province of the DPRK. Some time ago, the great leader of the Korean people, Kim Jong-il, visited a complex. That day he saw the Vinland fiber falling in cascade and said with great satisfaction that it has become possible to further glorify the leadership exploits of great President Kim Il-sung, the founder and pioneer of the Vinland industry. Immortal exploits for Tsutse Bet Vinland industry. In February 1957, Great President Kim Il-sung attended a meeting of the President of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea and received a report that a scientist had succeeded in research into a chemical fiber called vinylon with raw materials rich in Korea. That day, President Kim Il-sung attentively listened to the scientist's explanation about the vinylon making process and gave important instructions on industrializing the vinylon production at an early date but it was not easy to industrialize vinylon production. The scientists were making painstaking efforts after building an intermediary pilot plant. One day in June 1958, President Kim Il-sung called the plant and learned about their researches. He said to them, If you think boldly and work boldly and conduct an all-people movement for construction as they did when we built the Huangye Iron Works in the first war days, we can surely build a vinylon factory with our strength. I firmly believe you would do so. Encouraged by his deep trust, the scientists and researchers finished the designing of vinylon industry 
and solved technical issues for it in a short span of time. Reported of the fact, President Kim Il sung came to the site in March 1959 and took matters to accelerate the construction of the factory. He advanced the militant slogan, everything to the construction of the Vinland factory, and powerfully aroused the army and people to the construction of the factory. Under his wise guidance, the industrialization of Vinland was brilliantly realized in Korea, and the inaugural ceremony of the factory took place on May 6, 1961. Seo Eun-sil, lecturer of the South Hamgyong Provincial Museum of President Kim Il-sung's revolutionary activities, says, that day, the federal leader Kim Il Sung, wearing a bright smile on his face, said, as the saying goes, that the people's strength overpowers heaven. We could build this large factory in a short time by relying on the strength of the patriotic people. And they cut the ribbon for commissioning. He called the scientist who had researched the Vinalan and said, Vinalan is a future science, as it was invented by a Korean. Its factory was built by our designs and our strength, and it was produced with domestic raw materials. Under the guidance of Great President Kim Il Sung, the February 8th Vinalan complex was built into a Tsutse built Vinalan producer. Today, under the wise leadership of respected Kim Jong il, the complex is demonstrating its grandeur more highly. Thanks to the wise guidance of respected Kim Jong il, who opened the grandiose history of the Vinland industry of the Sungun era, the immortal exploits of great president Kim Il sung, the founder and pioneer of the Tsutse based Vinland industry, will shine forever in the history of the country. You've been listening to an account, Immortal Exploits for Tsutsi Built Vinland Industry. This is Voice of Korea. We now bring you on this course. General Lissimo Kim Il sung is with us.
Kim Il Sung, he is the son of Korea. Not only the Korean people, but also the world people respect and praise him. Kim Il Sung, the immortal Suchi idea created by him, shines in the world. Its bright light is the North Star, compass of the fighting people. Kim Il Sung, his Suchi idea is the greatest and most brilliant idea. Along with its rays, his name shines all over the world. O oh, comrade Kim Il Sung, his name shines with glory. His cause is great. The world people following the Suchi idea loudly sing, keeping faith in their warm hearts. The name of great comrade Kim Il Sung. There was a poem written by Luis Fernando Sedeño Correa, public figure of Panama, under the title, The Name of Kim Il Sung Shines All Over the World. From our regular program, All People Praise, this is Voice of Korea. Korea's career glorious 55 years. Now we bring you an interview. Important that people standard of living is the supreme principle of the activities of the Workers' Party of Korea. Hello. Hello. In the new year 2010, the Workers' Party of Korea advanced a policy calling for bringing about a radical turn in the people's standard of living this year, marking the 65th founding anniversary of the Workers' Party of Korea. It shows that today Korea regards it as the most important issue to improve the people's living. You are right. The political and social stability and economic development of a country fundamentally depend on how the country stabilizes and improves its people's living. Over the past 65 years since its foundation, the Workers' Party of Korea set it as the supreme principle of its activities to steadily improve the people's living and has pushed forward the work. In the middle of the 1990s, however, the Workers' Party of Korea directed greater access to the building of national defense to cope with the more vicious movers of the imperialists to stifle the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Thanks to Sun-gun or Army First Politics, Korea has become a dignified political ideological power and military power. On the basis of it, Korea has concentrated efforts on the economic development in recent years and thus led firm springboard to build an economic power. This year, the Workers' Party of Korea has presented the improvement of people's standard of living, the supreme principle of its activities, as the primary task, and clearly indicated the orientation and ways for its realization. Right. The joint editorial issued on the occasion of New Year 2010 and the joint calls of the Central Committee and the Central Military Commission of the Workers' Party of Korea issued on the occasion of the 65th founding anniversary of the Workers' Party of Korea, defined the light industry and agriculture as a major funds for the improvement of people's living. This is the manifestation of firm faith and will of the Workers' Party of Korea to improve the people's living by developing the light industry and agriculture, and furthermore, build a thriving nation as early as possible. The grand struggle of the Korean people to build a great prosperous and powerful socialist nation of Tsutse until 2012, marking the centenary birth anniversary of the great leader President Kim Il-sung, is widely led today by Kim Jong-il, General Secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea. Exactly. Last year, man, leader Kim Jong-il gave field guidance to many units to further improve the people's living. 
This year too, he continues to make unremitting tour of devotion for the people from the beginning of the year. His devoted efforts has brought about a great event that Zinalon Fiber, the fiber of Juche, which is a pride of the Korean nation, is falling in cascade. Thanks to his devotion, fresh changes are effected in all fields of light industry and agriculture every day. Under the wise guidance of leader Kim Jong-il, a radical turn will be brought about in the Korean people's living this year. There is so much for today's interview. Thank you. You are welcome. You've been listening to the interview. Improving the people's standard of living is the supreme principle of the activities of the Workers' Party of Korea. From the regular program, Workers' Party of Korea, glorious 65 years. This is Voice of Korea. Now, here is a main chorus. Long live the Workers' Party of Korea. A song on the ardent praise of the Korean army people for the Workers' Party of Korea, an ever victorious still like party. economy power in 2012. <laughs> now present an account, factory actively contributing to the improvement of the people's living.
The Ryongang Una Garment Factory is standing at the foot of a long hill in the Ryongang County, Nampo City, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The factory is not so large, but various kinds of its products are very popular. The factory found an important way to make innovations in production, in the scientification and modernization of production processes, and concentrated efforts on it and thus overfulfilled its task under the National Economic Plan every year in the past. Lee Kyung Il, chief engineer of the factory, says. Regarding science and technology as the basis of economic development, our factory has boldly introduced rational technical innovation plans into production. As a result, equipment is modernized in conformity with the demand of the new century and the production processes are put on a high scientific basis. Under the Scientific and Modern Commissions for Production, we also fulfilled the plan of last month too by making innovations in production with a maximum mobilization of the spiritual strength to carry out the tasks outlined in the joint editorial for this year. The factory has achieved great successes in production by introducing trends of creative and efficient technical innovation and rationalization proposals made by employees in recent years. On the basis of the experiences, the factory has set a plan of modernization and scientification of the production processes 1.5 times higher than last year and is carrying out the plan properly. The cutting work team, the preceding process of government production, selected rational way of dress pattern arrangement in cooperation with the officials of the technical preparation section of the factory, thus increasing the actual cutting rate 1.2 times as against the previous time. Different sewing work teams, including sewing work teams numbers 1 and 2, are making active efforts to produce a larger quantity of excellent and smart clothes that should attest and fancy of the Korean people. Taylor Kim Yong A says, we are working with a high sense of pride that every product we make gives substantial help to the improvement of the people's living. As you know, it is the decision and goal of our country to bring about a decisive turn in the improvement of the people's standard of living this year. The thought that we are in the ranks of practitioners of the results and among those running towards the goal greatly excites us and we do not feel tired, though we work on and on. Lee Kyung Yong has this to say. Deeply conscious that production is precisely science and technology and vice versa, we are free to accelerate scientification and modernization of the factory. It is the unanimous mind of all the employees of our factory to become standard bearers for the prosperity of the country to be brilliant as a thriving country. Today, too, the officials and other employees of the factory are devoting their all to make an active contribution to the improvement of the people's standard of living under the slogan, All for the Improvement of the People's Standard of Living, set forth in the Joint Chorus of the Central Committee and the Central Military Commission of the Workers' Party of Korea. You've been listening to the count. Factory actively contributing to the improvement of the people's living from the regular program towards an economic power in 2012. This is Voice of Korea. We now bring your female solo in Pangchang. The looks, the motherland world.
dear listeners, with this, we conclude English language service of Voice of Korea from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Voice of Korea presents its English language service for Europe between 13 and 14 hours UTC, between 15 and 16 hours UTC, between 18 and 19 hours UTC, and between 21 and 22 hours UTC on 13,760 kHz and 15,245 kHz. For North America, between 13 and 14 hours UTC and between 15 and 16 hours UTC on 9,335 kHz and 11,710 kHz. And for Northeast Asia, between 1 and 2 hours UTC and between 3 and 4 hours UTC on 7,200 kHz, 9,345 kHz and 9,730 kHz. Goodbye. This is Pyongyang.